Welcome to video two of the SEO Accelerator course. We're gonna talk about how to do SEO and we're really gonna walk you through the four strategies so again, you understand exactly what you get into from the beginning. Now, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go back and watch the previous video if you're a beginner especially on what is SEO and how does this whole thing work because if you don't understand those fundamentals, then this really isn't going to make any sense to you whatsoever. So definitely go check out that video first. Now, what I'd like to start with is by going through my SEO toolkit, and that is tools that I recommend you kind of need to get into this process. Now, these tools can be changed, and these tools will change over time as new tools come up and improve and everything like that, but these are the current tools I'm using for these current solutions, and then in the future, you can look them up, and if you're on a tighter budget, you can try and find cheaper or even possibly free alternatives. The first tool, obviously, is a website. This goes without saying, you need a website site to rank and I just wanted to include this just to make this ultra clear. Now the price of this website will vary dramatically so let's not even talk about that and in terms of SEO optimization of that website you can usually do a lot out of the box on most platforms so let's just say that this is free for SEO and the price of the website itself actually well varies. Beyond that of course you need something like Google Analytics to track the stats and the progress the KPIs. Are you actually making progress? Essentially this helps you measure that. Google Analytics is completely free. It's very 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 good so I highly recommend that you use that to again track the traffic because that is the end goal of this campaign. Beyond that, I highly recommend that you use Google Search Console, which again is completely free also. Google Search Console allows you to really see how Google are interacting with and crawling your website. Again, reference back to the spider in the previous video. So this is a great tool to really analyze that data. It is imperative for a good SEO campaign because it's a key part of the auditing process. Beyond that, you're gonna need something like Ahrefs to analyze the backlink profile. There are alternatives. Another great alternative is SEMrush, which also handles the organic keyword research, and really Ahrefs and SEMrush both do the exact same things. Some of them are better. Ahrefs are probably better on the backlink. SEMrush are a little bit better on your organic keywords research. So both of these are pretty good, and you just pick one or the other, depending on which one seems cooler to you. I'm personally an Ahrefs user. Now, don't worry if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, what any of these things are, because we are gonna dive into how to use these later. I just wanna get it out of the way, what the tools are, so you can quickly reference this at any time, and get a good idea of the costs associated with these tools. Beyond that, you have a tool like Surfer that allows you to basically use data to analyze and optimize your content correctly, rather than just kind of guessing how to do this. And then you're also gonna need a tool like Screaming Frog to do a crawl of your website. Good news is Screaming Frog is completely free for websites up to 500 pages, which is probably most people watching this video. If you run, say, an e-commerce store or a Shopify store or something like that, you may be over that, and in which case you can just pay the 99 pound a year, I think it is, which is really just insignificant for how great this tool is. And one final tool you probably wanna have is some sort of keyword tracker, like keyword.com, or again, there are multiple alternatives to this that allow you just to track the keywords that you wanna focus on. So again, you can track this with other tools like SEMrush or anything like that, but a rank tracker updates more often every few hours, every day, and specifically allows you to track specific keywords to see how well you're progressing against those main keywords. And again, we'll explain how to integrate that as part of the strategy as we get into this. So adding this all up, if you choose one tool, Ahrefs or SEMrush, this comes to around $222 a month budget needed to rank a typical website on the smaller side of the scale. Now, again, you don't need to spend all of this. You can sign up for a trial of some of these tools and cancel after the trial. You can find free or cheaper alternatives, but if I were to do this to the best of my ability, I would suggest using these tools, which comes to around $222 per month. Now, getting into the actual strategy, there are six steps to this process that I'd like to break down in detail in this video, including what tools you're gonna have to use out of the initial toolkit that we mentioned. The first step in the process is auditing your website. Let me explain, okay? Now, firstly, the tools, right? So the tools are Screaming Frog to crawl your website. Basically, it's the same idea of Google crawling your website, except you control this crawl. And then you're gonna need Google Search Console again because they already crawl your website and they're the website you're trying to rank inside of. So let's look at how exactly they're analyzing, looking at and crawling your website. It provides a lot of useful information to do that. Now, how exactly do we audit a website and what does this mean? Well, let me explain. 
Now, the objective of this step is to identify technical SEO issues. That means we're looking for things like 404 pages and redirect chains and error pages of different kinds, right? Just errors from a technical perspective on your website, which will slow down that spider, that crawler from accessing all of your content. You're also looking for other things like thin content pages, pages that just don't have any value to search engines with no real unique content on them, things like broken canonical tags, and just different technical issues like this. Now again, if this makes absolutely no sense to you yet, then don't worry because we're gonna have our entire module on technical SEO, but I just wanna explain the process going into this so you know why exactly we're doing this, essentially identifying technical SEO issues. At this point, once you've done this, what you wanna do is you wanna store this crawl data for later use. This, this data inside of Screaming Frog and this data inside of Google Search Console is massively valuable for other parts of the campaign also, so make sure you store and keep access to this data. Don't delete it and have to rerun this process later. It wastes time. Now moving on to step number two, it is check existing keyword opportunities. And I'm presuming you already have an existing website in place already, right? So in this case, you're gonna need two tools. You're gonna need a rank tracker like keyword.com or again, a wealth of others that allows you to track these specific keywords, i.e. search phrases that you're interested in ranking for. Now that's great, but it doesn't really track all the other keywords and it's not really useful for research initially, which is where you want a tool like SEMrush or again, Ahrefs can do this also, which allows you to identify your existing keyword rankings and then also identify the same thing for your competitors so you can really look at your competitors and see exactly what they're doing, what keywords they're ranking for, how many people search for these keywords every month, what position they're ranking in, and again, a wealth of data just like that. Now, the objective here is very simple. We want to create a keyword research plan for your existing pages. We always want to start with what you already have. If you already have pages on your website, then let's not look at creating new pages just yet. Let's look at how we can get more traffic to the existing pages already on your website. Now, we're going to do this for a few different ways, like looking at, firstly, the existing rankings and the quick wins. That means that if you're already on page one for a keyword, you're in position number five, then a very, very easy win in terms of traffic is just to quickly move that from position number five to position number one. It's a lot easier to do that than just starting from scratch. So that's one of the key starting areas, looking at, again, those existing rankings and those quick win opportunities. Beyond this, we're gonna look into things like competitor keyword rankings. So look at the same thing, but your competitors, what are they ranking for? You may find there's a competitor that's a similar size to you that they're ranking really, really well for a specific keyword. And guess what? You have a page about that keyword, that topic also. So what you can do is you can then look at the competitor and copy that data and start doing the same thing as then. Again, that's pretty much a quick win also because you can see it's already working really, really well for your competition. Now, another great thing is to look at keyword gaps on existing pages, and that's kind of what I just mentioned there. We look at your competitors and you see what keywords are they ranking for and what keywords are you ranking for, and maybe you already have a page about this topic, but you're not focused and you're not ranking for this keyword whatsoever. That probably means you don't mention that keyword whatsoever on a page. You have any content about that keyword. So by looking at that and identifying that keyword gap, you can basically add content about that and start ranking for this additional keyword, again, on the same or on the existing page that you already have. Now, once again, once you've completed this whole process, you wanna store this data for later use. Again, keyword research is simply that, it is research. We didn't have to use that when we're doing our link building and our on-page SEO process, which is next. Now, step number three is just that, is updating on-page SEO elements. Now, remember when I kept mentioning over and over again, hey, store this data for later in terms of the crawl and the keyword research data? Well, this is where we're actually going to use that data, right? So the objective again, what is it? Well, the objective here is to resolve on-page SEO issues and optimize content across every page. Now, we're gonna do this in a few different ways. One of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze the current on-page elements. We're gonna look at the title tag, the H1, the subheadings, and the length of the meta description, all of these different things like this, a whole checklist. You can see example here from Screaming Frog. I'm gonna see, is this good, and can we make improvements here, which in almost all cases, we can. 
right? Beyond that, we're going to recommend changes based on keyword research. So this ties in again with both steps here. We're going to look at the keyword research and hey, is the keyword in this title tag? Is there any secondary keywords that we can squeeze into that title tag for additional rankings? Is the keyword in H1? We're going to use that keyword research data to optimize the pages and the content in a very quick and simple way. So we start again with recommending. We look at the research, we recommend what exactly we're going to do, and then we will go ahead and implement those changes. And if this is a big site, this is ongoing. If it's a small site, you can get this all done in a week or two. It just depends on the size of the overall site. Moving on to step number four, and that is going to be to update and improve internal links. So internal links are a huge part of SEO. It's essentially just links between different pages on your own website. Now you can optionally use Screaming Frog to help you analyze the internal links, but for smaller sites like most people watching this, let's just skip that and let's just make this nice and easy. So the objective here, what is it? It is to audit and identify internal link opportunities. What does that mean? We're going to do things like we're going to analyze the current internal links. Again, a tool like Screaming Frog that makes this much easier. But realistically, if you're a small site, you can just look through your site and just get an idea of what all the internal links are quite easily. Beyond that, we're going to find both in-link and out-link opportunities. What does that mean? An in-link means a link pointing to this page, and an out-link means a link pointing out from this page. So you can find pages that don't link to any other pages on your website. You can find pages that don't have many links pointing to them, and then you can kind of tie them together if the topics are relevant. And then beyond that, of course, you want to, again, implement those recommendations. We start off with researching, then we recommend, and then we implement based on those recommendations. Now, moving on to step number five, we want to audit the backlink profile and begin link building. This is where you're really going to need a tool like Ahrefs to analyze the backlinks of your competitors. And if you don't know already, we will get into this, but backlinks are essentially links pointed to your website from other people's websites. So this is a big ranking factor. Now, Ahrefs is a pretty great tool, probably the best on the market for doing this. They start at just $99 a month, which is expensive, but it's not for the data that they give you access to. And again, the objective here, what is it? Well, the objective here is to remove toxic links if necessary, then plan a new link building strategy. So the way we're going to achieve this is, number one, we're going to start off by analyzing and auditing the current backlinks. So what backlinks does your website already have? If you're a brand new website, then none. Good. That is better than nothing. But just double check even still, because you may have bought a domain that had some history in the past of some toxic negative type of links. So just double check that. First, we want to do check there's nothing negative already in the backlink profile. This is very, very important. Beyond that, we're going to go ahead and compare the competitors' backlinks. So how many backlinks do our competitors have? Can we actually compete against them? What is the velocity that they're building links at? Meaning, are they building 10 links a month? five links a month, a hundred links a month, right? We need to, again, compare what the competitors are doing so we can match that, again, if we have the budget to do so. And then beyond that, we want to just plan our new link building strategy. So what exactly is our link building strategy? What types of links are we going to use? What is the anchor text? Is the text of that link going to be? Which pages are we going to link them to? And all different things like that. We're going to plan out this full strategy. And then as always, we want to implement this strategy, but on an ongoing basis. You don't just do link building one time. This is going to be an ongoing every single month and a pretty consistent level every single month forever. Basically, that's how this works. It's an ongoing forever type process. Now, finally, that brings us to step number six, which is to plan new content. And now, there are two tools that I recommend for this step. One of them is going to be a keyword research tool, again, like SEMrush, which allows you to really easily just look up your competitors, see which keywords they're focused on, and see which ones you're missing on your own website. This is basically a keyword gap analysis, and it's really, really useful. Beyond that, you want to use a tool like Surfer, which, again, uses data to analyze competitors and your own website and tell you how exactly you should optimize your website based on data for the specific keyword that you're looking to rank for. And in terms of the objective here, what is it? Well, you want to identify keyword gaps. Again, we mentioned that previously. Then plan new content. Now, Surfer have an amazing tool for this. Shout out to Surfer again. That allows you to basically just enter your keyword. I entered here Shopify SEO. And they just tell you, hey, to rank for this keyword Shopify SEO, you need a page about e-commerce SEO and SEO for Shopify and case studies SEO and Shopify Google Analytics and just different things like this, which is basically a keyword gap. 
From there, you plan the content, right? So let's go through the steps, okay? The first thing you wanna do is run a keyword gap analysis, again, like that example that is explained there, or you can use other tools, again, like SEMrush to do this. Also, I highly recommend you probably do a combination of the two. Beyond that, that gives you, okay, his keywords that you're not focused on, his topics that you're not focused on right now to write. Then what you wanna do is you wanna plan new content ideas again based on that, and you wanna write out detailed briefs of that content. So if you wanted to create a piece of content again about e-commerce SEO in this example, then you'd write out a detailed brief of what exactly that content is gonna be about, which keywords are gonna be included on that page, which words and phrases are gonna be included on that page, and a full detailed brief of how to write that content. From there, you either do this afterwards or during the writing phase. You want to optimize your content for your target keywords, again, with that specific piece of content. And then you want to do this, again, on an ongoing basis. You want to publish new content every single month. Now, it doesn't need to be 100 blog posts a month. It doesn't need to be 10 blog posts a month or one a week or anything like that. It doesn't mean a specific number, but consistent, regular content is definitely beneficial, depending on the budget and depending on your objectives with a specific campaign. So anyway, that wraps up the full six week process. The first step is to start with an audit, which guess what we're gonna cover in module four of this course. In step two, you wanna check existing keyword opportunities. Again, we cover that in module two of the course. The third step is to update on-page SEO elements, which you cover in module three of the course. The fourth step is to update and improve internal links, which is also in module three of the course. Step five is to audit the backlink profile and begin link building, which is covered in module five. And the final step, number six, is to plan new content, and that's gonna be covered in module two and a little bit in module three also. So that's what's upcoming in this course. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe below so you get notified when these new videos drop. Again, we're doing two or three or four every single week until the whole course is finished. If you're enjoying this course so far and you learned something new from this video, please do me a favor, click the like button below so YouTube recommends this video to more people. And aside from that, I will see you in the next video. We're getting into module two, which is gonna be keyword research. I'll see you there.